in the Linux operating system, there isn't just one thing happening at a time. There are many different processes all running simultaneously. That's one of the big benefits of running these operating systems that can do a lot of things at one time. The processes that are running can be started by the end user. The end user can launch an application, can start a utility, can perform a function on the Linux device. And the user is the one that is both starting and stopping that particular process. There are also processes that are started by the system. System. When you start up your Linux operating system, there's a series of init scripts that will run that will start up a lot of the administrative tasks and the tasks that are required to get your system up and running when you first turn it on. If you start looking into the processes that are running on your system, you'll notice that there is a unique identifier that's associated with every single process. Even if there are processes that are running exactly the same command with exactly the same parameters, they all look the same, each one of them will have a unique ID. We call that the process ID or the PID. And as we go through this video, you'll start to see some of the things you can do with this PS command to look at the processes. In a later video, we're going to go into a lot of detail about the process command, but we'll give you just enough of what you need in this video to be able to identify and stop some processes that might be running on your system. So you'll become very familiar with the PS command that will simply show the processes that are running for the user that's logged in. You can also do a PSE, which shows you a lot more detail and even a PS space EX to show you not only the processes running for you, the logged in user, but all of the system processes that are running on your computer as well. Here's a CentOS machine that I've got running on my computer. If I perform a PS, you'll see that I don't have a lot happening on my local user logged in session. I'm simply logged in at a bash prompt. And in fact, it shows me the PS command that I was running to get the output of the PS command. A PS space E will show me a lot more detail about everything that might be running for my user session. You can see some mini TTY sessions. There's the bash command and the PS command that I happen to be running for that. And as I mentioned, you can perform a PSEX and look at all of the information that comes through on a PSEX. You get all of the system processes that are running. But notice with each one of them on the left side of the screen is the process ID. And those are the ID numbers that we're going to use because we want to be able to manage those processes. And for this particular video, we want to be able to kill or stop those processes. We're going to refer to that process ID to be able to do that. Now, in the normal workings of your computer, you may not find yourself going in and administratively stopping or killing a particular service. Most applications will start up normally. When we're finished with the application, they'll stop normally. And we never have to think about an active starting or stopping of the application. There are some applications, though, that don't actually work exactly the way we might expect. We might start the application and then realize that it is now stuck in a loop and it's not going to stop normally we're going to have to perform some type of administrative function on that particular application to get it out of the running processes of our computer. There's a command called kill that allows you to do this. And one of the nice things about these kill commands is that you can not just simply turn off a process, but you can send a very specific signal that will tell the process to kill in a very certain way. For instance, there is a signal that we would send to the kill, and we can list out all of these signals with a kill dash L. And if you do that, you'll get quite a list of signals that you could choose from. Here's a few of them. A signal HUP, which hangs up the process. That's what that HUP is for, which means it's going to kill the process, but then immediately restart it again. That may be something you'd like to do if you want to restart a web server or restart a database server. That might be a good command to use. There's another one that would kill effectively the command by sending it a control C. That's the interrupt process. Maybe that's the way that we get out of the loop that this is in. There are some applications, though, that are not going to respond to this control C. It may be stuck in a loop, and we need to be a little bit more aggressive. There is a signal that you can send, which is a signal 9. It's called a SIG kill, and it is a brute force kill. One of the challenges with doing this, though, is that you may leave memory in use. You may re leave resources that are still running on your computer, so that may not be the signal you'd like to send initially. Maybe try some of the others first. And there's also a SIG term that sends a signal to terminate immediately. There is no getting out of that one. You're going to terminate and simply stop the application exactly where it is. 
let's look at a list of those signals that we could send for the kill command. I'm going to perform a kill dash L. And you can see there's a lot of signals available to you, a lot of different options. But don't be overwhelmed by this. You'll tend to just use a number of these. There might be a particular application where the application developer says, if you need to perform a kill, perform it with this particular signal. But I would imagine most of the time you'd be using the ones that we discussed, for instance, the signal 1, the signal 2, the signal 4, and the signal 9, or a mixture of different signals within there to try to terminate that particular process. To be able to terminate these processes, we're going to use one of two different commands. If you know the process ID, you will use the kill command. The kill command allows you to specify that signal and then specify the process ID to be able to terminate and restart or simply terminate that process. You would use this syntax, kill, and then dash and the signal. You can use either the signal name, for instance, S-I-G-H-U-P, the signal hang up. I could also swap that for the number associated with that signal. So I could use a kill dash one, and then I would put the process ID for that process that I wanted to terminate. There's also another command that you could use if you don't know the process ID. Maybe you know the name of the program that's running, and you'd simply like to kill it based on that particular name. You can use a kill all command to do that. Kill all it uses the same type of syntax. I usually will put a dash I in the kill all command so I can get some interactive feedback. It will prompt me on whether I really want to kill the particular program that I'm asking about. I would then use the signal. In this case, I can use the name or the number, for instance, the dash 9 to be able to terminate that session. And then I would choose the name that's associated with that process. If I was running the Vim editor, I could choose the kill all dash I dash 9 and Vim. And then I'll get a prompt that says, here is the Vim that I found running on your computer. Would you like to terminate that process? And then you can choose yes or no, and it will decide what to do from there. Let's try that out and see how it works. When we listed the PS command earlier, we tried that out. We saw all of the processes that were running for us as this user on this system. And you'll notice that we have a few that are running. These are the terminal TTY sessions, the bash session that I'm in now, and the PS command. So let's start up an application. Let's do Vim since we chose that earlier. And I'm going to choose the ampersand to run it in the background. So it's back there and running right now. And if I perform a PSE, you'll see that indeed I have a new Vim that is running 4139. And now that is running on my system in the background and perhaps now I would like to stop that particular application. And the way we would do that is with the kill command. I'm going to use the kill dash 9. We'll stop it dead in its tracks. And I'm going to specify the process ID, which in this case is 4139. So I have to know that 4139 to be able to stop that particular process. And now it gives me simply a prompt back. But if we perform a PSE, you'll notice now that 4139 is no longer in my process list. And indeed, it gave us feedback that it had killed the Vim application. Let's do this again, but I would like to perform that with the kill all command. Maybe I don't know what the process ID is for that Vim. So I'm going to start a Vim up again. It told me that indeed it's running at 4147. And I'm going to perform a kill all. And I'm going to choose interactive. I'm also going to choose my dash 9, which is the signal that I would like to choose. And I'm simply going to type in Vim. And it's going to look through my process list and find all of the cases where this particular name would be a match. And in my case, there's really only one running on this particular computer. And it does say that it's, it's signaled to Vim. And it did specify 4147, which does match that process ID we got when we sent it into the background. Is that what I'd like to do? Notice that the default is a capital N. That's the capital. That's the default that will be used. If we simply hit Enter, it would not kill that process. I would like to specify, though, a Y, which forces it then to be able to perform that kill against that search. Makes it very easy if you don't know what the process ID is, especially if you look at some systems. If I do a PSEX, there's a lot of different processes running here. It might be easier for me to simply use the kill all command. Even if there are multiple versions of it running, I may be able to find the one that I'm running and I'm most interested in killing. So you should be able to use both of these commands the kill command and the kill all command to find the processes that you would like to terminate and administratively stop them right here from the Linux console.